IAD is saying you've had questionable relationships with a number of young people and that it suggests a pattern of illegal behavior on your part. Apparently you've intervened on behalf of a Laverne Thomas twice now. She's just she's just a girl from the neighborhood I've been looking out for. She's a minor, just like this Bingham girl from the Upper East Side. Detective Burke never even met Nicole with Bingham. And who is Andrew Gordon? Because they're saying your client got him out of a shoplifting charge at the six. That was just... Look, all this stuff is just being twisted and turned to make me look like shit. Doesn't seem like they need to do much twisting to make you look like shit, Detective. What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Odai J and we are locked in. We got another exclusive clip for episode one of season three, Raising Canaan, which drops December 1st, and it is Detective Burt. Now, if you were in my live last night to catch up, we talked about the administrative group just a little bit because Detective Burt, even though no one likes her, we need her for the show to push the storyline along. Because if she wasn't here, then everyone in New York City would be running amok and there would be no justice. Even though she's been messing up, we're going to go in here and break down this clip. Now, before we jump into this and break it down, if you like power content, breakdowns, theories, and predictions like this, especially Raising Canaan, then hit your subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. I'm on that road to 45,000 subscribers. So each and every one of you, I appreciate you. And if you don't see this video at 100 likes, hit that like button for me. Now, Detective Burke. Her and her dad have to go in there and talk to the boss. And whenever you have to go and talk to the boss, that's a bad thing. But when you have to bring your parents with you, that's <laughs> that's like getting suspended from school. So let's go ahead and jump into it. This is Detective Burke. First look. You the editor of Stone Canaan, and it's waiting for you if you want it. Burke overall has been doing her job. We know she's hot on the trail of Raquel Thomas, Detective Howard, and Canaan. These three, she's trying to figure out exactly how it works. And we know that Raquel could potentially be an informant that worked for Howard. We're still trying to figure that out. But also, Detective Burke has always had some questionable relationships. And that's what this clip is about. Remember, she's been talking to Jukebox. She's been talking to Nicole's family. Nicole OD, and she thought it came from Jukebox. And she's just trying to connect the dots. Well, unfortunately for Burke, these kids are underage and she's not allowed to talk to them one on one. We also want to see where is Jukebox going to start to change? Is it going to be because of Detective Burke or is it going to be because of her family? But right now, Burke is being questioned about her questionable acts when it comes to having these illegal relationships with these minors. As I mentioned, Detective Burke, she brought her father in. And if you remember, her father and her brother, they all served the force. They did an amazing job. That's why Detective Burke wanted to do it to show her father, hey, I'm capable of doing it. But now the dad is hearing, who is Laverne? Who is this girl that you're talking to illegally? And she's trying to say she has information that could potentially lead to a bigger case. But unless you have that actual evidence and it's documented that you're talking to this minor, which you can't do because they need a representative, whether a family member, a parent or guardian or a lawyer. So the dad is looking at her thinking, why aren't you going by the book? Everything I did was by the book. Why aren't you doing this? Now, people are asking, why is her father here? Well, he's well respected. So I'm looking at it as her boss is saying, hey, I'm going to talk to you, but bring your dad in out of respect that we have for him and everything he did for the police station. For Burke, this is going to get very interesting. Now, I wasn't interested in the backstory of her and having her dad come in here, but I think it's gonna play out in our favor. And what I'm saying by that is, the dad is gonna get on Bert. Now, he might take her side and actually help her out. Hey, if this is what you're gonna do, this is what you need to do. You see what I'm saying? You can't be out here doing stuff outside of the book and think you're actually gonna make it. Because she did say, and she admitted, I did talk to Laverne several times, but it's just a girl from the neighborhood that I'm trying to help. Well. You're trying to help her. You want information in return and you can't get that. And I'm assuming that this guy is from the union and he's actually there to speak up on her behalf. But Detective Burt, we've seen how she's been running around the city. Her interactions with Kanan, her interactions with Jukebox, going up to Raquel. So if anybody files a complaint against her, this is going to look bad for her. So she's going to have to take a step back from everything that she's doing and start to primarily focus on Detective Howard and figure out how Raquel ties into all of this 
and see if he is actually the father of Canaan, even though she has a hunch. Now that's the issue. Detective Howard is teamed up with Raquel and Unique, and he's definitely looking out for his son. So she's going to have to play her cards correctly to get close to Howard to get the information she's actually looking for. I can tell you one thing. Her boss is upset, and he's not going to deal with this. Now, they might put her on administrative leave for a minute, but we do have that picture, the photo of her and Detective Howard in the car together. So he might just tell her to back off of everything and drop that case like he told her to leave Detective Howard alone when she was digging into that. But one thing we know about Detective Burt, she's very, very persistent. Remember, her and her girlfriend were going over the files that she got when she wasn't supposed to have that information. So she's just trying to put the puzzle together. And even though she's in trouble, she's the one that's going to push the storyline for us. Because as I mentioned in the intro, without Detective Burt, it's the wild, wild west in New York City. And all roads lead back to Detective Howard. Burke is going to eventually come to him, impress him, and tell him, this is what I have, I need answers. But we know Howard, he's going to stand ten toes down because he's trying to protect his son Canaan, which means he has to protect Raquel, because if he doesn't protect all of this, this will show that he was messing with the CI while she was up under age. And just like Detective Burke got chewed out, He'll get chewed out, but he's black. He'll get fired for messing with a minor. And everything that we've seen in power will be dismissed, just like how Ronnie got out by the tampering of the evidence. So we can't even pretend like we don't know the number one priority for Detective Burt going on in season three is trying to figure out how these three all fit in together and she wants to bring them all down because she's still looking for revenge from when Kanan pushed her down at the basketball courts when she tried to arrest him, from when Raquel didn't give up the information at the bodega when she tried to press her, and of course, from Detective Howard pushing her away since we first seen these two on the scene together. Detective Burke, you better fall back before your boss gets to you. All right, there we go, the first clip of Detective Burke. Let me know what you think. Are they going to suspend her for a minute? Tell her to drop the case? And if they do this, do you believe that Detective Burke is really just going to drop a case? Or is she going to continue to do the, the illegal stuff that she's doing? Because she's trying to get to the bottom of it. Let me know what you think. I'm Mode IJ. I'm excited about Rays and Kane in Season 3. December 1st, we will have a live after show discussion, probably starting at 3 p.m. Eastern. I'll let you guys know. I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. So if you can, hit that subscribe button. And if I made you go, hmm, then hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button again. Turn on all notifications. Thanks for watching. I'm out.